hey y'all and welcome back to my channel hello beautiful people welcome back to living like marm y'all i just ate a cookie but it was a cookie thin i'm trying to eat better it was a cookie thin but i probably got crumbs on me whatever all right, y'all, I'm about to put on some lotion and we're about to get into this video. Anyways, how's everyone doing today? How's life? You know, like, let's talk. I have no friends. <laughs> y'all, I've been living in Atlanta for a year now and I can count the amount of friends that I made on one finger. So how's it going? How's life? All right. With some lotion on my hands, and let's get into this video today, okay? As you can see by the title, we're gonna be talking about dental hygiene. So, for those of you who do not know, my name is Marshall. I am a dental hygienist. I have been doing dental hygiene. 2024 is my eighth year doing dental hygiene. So, I've been doing dental hygiene since I was like 20. I graduated when I was 19, but started dental hygiene when I was 20. So, I'm eight years in the game, y'all. And I've been through some. You know, I've had some ups and some downs, but today I'm going to share with you some downs, okay? We're going to get into it, all right? Let's go ahead and get right into it, but before I do, I want to remind you guys, and I said this in a previous video, I wasn't the smartest chick on the block. I wasn't the smartest person when I, you know was in hygiene school and after hygiene school and up until the other day. I, I'm just not, mm, common sense wasn't always there with me. You know, I'm starting to gain my common, my common sense and get some discernment as I get older and closer to God. But, um, you know, when I was graduating 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, I just, it didn't click. So I'm about to tell you guys some of the, well, I'm about to tell you guys the top five most horrific times that I have had in my career as a dental hygienist. And this is taking place like in the office with my patients, etc. cetera. So, um, but I say that to say, please don't judge me. Cause I'm gonna tell you right now, I was a little, not always all the way there. But God has worked on me and he's working on me. So we're getting better. We are getting better. But anyways, y'all, so I'm going to start this video and I'm going to go ahead. We're going to start at number five and count down. So five is going to be the least horrific and number one is going to be the most horrific. But just keep in mind, five through one are all horrific. So I have my iPad here because I took like just a little picture. I have a little list here that I'm going to go over. Okay, so let's start at number five. There was this one time, okay? So number five is going to be this one time that I had, you know, ugh, basically gotten cussed out by a patient, okay? So as a dental hygienist, you have to, you know, your job is to clean teeth. But we're so much more than that, y'all. We are helping to prevent gum disease, gum infections, cavities, all of these things. Everything that's happening in the mouth, I always stress this with my patients. Whatever bacteria is in your mouth, you swallow that bacteria, it flows through your body, flows through your blood, your blood and can affect your health. So y'all, dental hygiene is so much more than just cleaning teeth. If you are in dental hygiene or if you are going to school for dental hygiene, trust me, I know I have family and friends close to me to this day who just think our job is to clean teeth, whiten teeth, whatever. It's so surface level. But y'all, just remember we are doing so much more, okay? So there's this one time I have this patient and you know, I'm like probing him, so I'm checking his gum health. And I'm like, um, I'm sorry, but like I need to sit your chair up and I need to 
um, you know, go over some things with you really quick because I was doing a gum exam and I noticed that you have a gum infection. You have, you know, your gums are bleeding and they're swollen, they're, you know, inflamed. Are you flossing? The guy's like, no. And, you know, he, I was just like, hey, like, you know, this is just my findings. This is what I'm seeing. But you have a really bad gum infection and we need to do a deep cleaning in order to get you taken care of because a regular cleaning that I know that most people want and I know if you're not in hygiene and you are watching this, you know what I'm talking about. If you have gone to the dental office after some time and they're like, uh-uh, girl, or uh-uh, sir, you're going to need something bigger than just this cleaning. And people think that, you know, we're scamming them and we're just trying to get money. But it's like, bro, we're really trying to help you prevent infection in your mouth and in your body. Like, the end of the day... It is for your health. So I'm trying to explain to this guy, I'm like, you know, you have a gum infection, you need a deep cleaning. This guy flips out on me. He's just like, I'm here for my regular clean. And mind y'all, this happens all the time. But this guy in particular, he just went off on me, like went off on me, called me all different types of names. I had to go and get my doctor. Now my doctor comes in and mind you, my doctor is... Um, real petite, you know, she was so sweet. She was super petite, like, and, and, you know, she was a brand new doctor. She was just, you know, she was just harmless. Like, I love her so much. I miss working with her, but she was just harmless. And she's like, hey, like, you know, trying to explain to him even greater. He starts flipping out on my doctor, flipping out, like, just cussing us out, telling us, that we're stupid, like we, like he's coming in for a cleaning, he's gonna get his cleaning, da 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 da. It's like he didn't even give us a chance to be like, hey, you know, how about like this time we do a cleaning for you and the next time you come back, let's do your deep cleaning at that time. Like he just didn't wanna accept the information at all. And patients like this, I notice that those are patients who have already been to another office and have been declined for a cleaning because of the amount of infection in their gums. And now they're just bouncing around different offices trying to figure out who's going to do this regular cleaning for me. But baby, it ain't me. You did not pick the right girl. So whatever, he's flipping out on me, flipping out on the doctor. And then at some point, our one a dental assistant comes in and she's just like, you cannot talk to us this way. And she she's like, you know, she's an older woman, but she gave it to him right back. Like me and the doctor, we're still trying to be like professional. We're like, we need to calm down. But this lady was just like, she came back and gave it to him how he was giving it to us. And she cussed him out all the way out the door. Like that man ran out the door. So that was number five. But that was very light, y'all. That wasn't all that because honestly, to be honest, if you're in the dental field, that happens all the time. If you're getting ready to go into the dental field, it's going to happen, especially as a dental hygienist. You got to be really good at explaining why your patient needs the treatment they need. And you also have to stand your ground and be like, you know what? This is my license. This is supervised neglect when I do regular cleanings for you. But this is how I handle it now. Back then, I was very like, I'm not touching, you know, unhealthy gums at a certain extent. Like if it gets like to the point where it's like so unhealthy, like, I don't know. It's all taboo, but it's like, I feel like you should not touch that patient and try to do a healthy cleaning if the gums are extremely infected. It's like, it could make it worse. But what I do now is, you know, I will give the patient the information. If the patient comes back acting like that, or, you know, they just do not want to do it, I will respect the patient's time, but I'll be honest with them. I'll say, you came in here for a cleaning. I'm going to respect your time and I'm going to polish. The keyword is polish, right? Because that's what you're doing. You're not cleaning. You're not removing. You shouldn't be sitting there. You know, it shouldn't be taking you 45 minutes to an hour to clean these teeth. You should definitely not be touching the gum line. And you should just be like, I will polish your teeth today. And, you know, furthermore, if you want to continue to come back to this office, you need to follow our treatment plan and what 
I and doctor have diagnosed or what doctor has, because doctor is the only one who could diagnose, right? But you're obviously getting confirmation from the doctor and you know, what doctor has diagnosed, you need to follow your diagnosed treatment plan because it is our license that you are messing with. It is supervised neglect to not do deep cleanings on these periodontal periodontal diseased patients. Periodontal disease is an infection of the gums, okay? So, keyword is infection, and you know, you just have to really explain to me. Anyways, we're gonna go to number four. Okay, guys, so number four horrific moment for me in dental hygiene. <laughs> oh, geez. So, I worked at this office, and mind you, this was like the first six months of me ever being a dental hygienist. So this was eight, seven, eight years ago. I was working at this office, and there was this other hygienist there, and she was like, she would clean teeth in like literally 10 minutes. Like she would have her patients in and out, in and out. I didn't know any better. Like obviously now that I know, I'm like, this girl probably was not doing a good job cleaning their teeth. She probably was doing an awful job, but like me, like I'm like in competition with the girl. I'm like, oh my gosh, like she's cleaning these teeth super fast. Like I need to basically like hurry up. Like what I'm doing is not quick enough. Like I need to hurry up. So maybe like a week into working, like I had this one day where she was just knocking her patients out. She was just, you know, okay, bye. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. So, like, I was just, like, trying to keep up with her. And so, I had this patient. So, I go to clean this man's teeth. And um, I hear the hygienist. She's, like, done. And so, I'm, like, I'm done, too. And I, like, call for the doctor. The doctor comes over, right? He's, like, checking the guy's teeth. And he, like, takes his instrument. And he's just scraping off all this plaque that I love. Like, he's just, like, scraping it off. It was like, girl, really? Like, did you even touch him? Did you even try? Like, did you even use the suction, the water? Anything would have gotten this off. Like, did you even touch him? Did you? Did you? And that was the same patient that when I um, was going to, like, floss him... He had a lingual retainer, like uh, after braces, sometimes they'll put a permanent bar on the inside of your teeth just to keep the teeth in place. Those of you who don't know what that is, and you have to use a special floss threader. So you have to like go and thread through each teeth to get underneath the bar. And um, he also had that and I had no idea how to use it. I had, I think that was, the, I don't know if that was the same patient or the same day, but listen, all I know is I didn't know how to use it. And, um, I tried to not use it at all. And he was like, oh, are you going to like floss red? And I was like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, I just, I, I, um, was about to do that right now. Like lying, straight up lying. And then he's like, oh, okay. So like, I never used to do it because I'm like, I didn't know how to do it and I would like get away with it. Mind you, again, I had only been practicing for under six months at this point. So I go to grab like a piece of floss thread and I'm like trying to get it in there and I cannot get that thing in there because I've never done it before. I'm like shaking, I'm sweating, everything. And he's like, I can help you like get through. Like I can show you how to do it if you don't know how to do it. And I was just like, no, 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 I know how to do it. And then like literally I think he ended up having to grab it and do it for me. Like, girl, why lie? Like, now that I'm at the age that I'm at, sometimes with my patients, like, I, my mind be everywhere. And I'll forget something as simple because, like, sometimes, like, I, I don't know. Sometimes I do a different routine, which I cannot do a different routine. I have to stick to one routine so I don't forget. But sometimes I'll go, like, a different routine where, like, I'll polish the patient's teeth first and then I'll floss and sometimes I'll floss first and then I'll polish just depending on like you know if I want to make sure whatever it just depends sometimes I go off my routine and so when I go off my routine sometimes I'll forget to floss at the end 
And so now at this age, at this point, I'm just like, my patient be like, you ain't floss. I'm like, girl, I forgot. And this doesn't happen all the time, but like, just for instance, you know, I'm like, oh girl, I completely forgot. I'm so sorry. Like, let me just go ahead and floss. Like I went off my routine. It's just that easy because we're human. We make mistakes, but child back then I was like, uh-uh, you're not about to sit here and embarrass me. And I ended up embarrassing myself even more. I didn't remove that guy's plaque and I didn't floss underneath his um, lingual bar because I didn't know how to. And, you know, the doctor didn't even really say anything. It was just all in his facial expression. He looked disgusted. He was just like picking the plaque off the teeth. And oof. I felt like they liked me at that office, but when I left, that doctor said, you know it's no hard feelings, right? And I was like, yeah, no, I know. Child, he was probably like, get out of here. Get out. All right, so number three. Number three horrific moment for me, and I almost kind of didn't want to even bring this up, but I'm gonna talk about it. There was a time where I had a patient who um, she, used to, she would see, you know, the other hygienist. And this day, like the hygienist that she typically seen was already booked. So I guess they have put the girl on my schedule. So whatever, you know, that happens. I don't think anything of it. So I go to the girl's room, whatever. I'm like reviewing her health history, whatever. She has anxiety, depression. 90% of people that I see in my office, they mark off that they have anxiety and depression. I don't know if it's something that they really have or if they're just saying that they're anxious and depressed when they come to the dental office. I don't know, but 95% of people mark this off that they have it, right? So whatever, I'm like, you know, going through the motions where I'm like, okay, well, you know, my name's Marshall. I'm going to be her hygienist today. Like, you know, any concerns? She's like, no. And she's just like really quiet, standoffish. Sometimes I get patients that are like that. And I'm just like, whatever, you know, like not talkative, like whatever. Like, I'm like, I have no idea what your problem is, lady. I'm just here to do my job. So I'm just like, whatever. I lean her back. I clean her teeth. Does everything feel okay? You okay? Like, does everything feel good? She's like, she's like, yeah, like, I'm like, okay, whatever. So I go and get the doctor for the exam. And mind you, for our exams, like the doctor comes into the room and um, it's a small, it was a small room. So like I stood behind the patient. So I was like on like the computer behind the patient, like typing any notes that the doctor would say, whatever. But the patient couldn't see me. I was like literally behind the patient and the doctor like came in front of the patient. Hey, how you doing? How was your visit? And the lady was like, I had anxiety the entire time. And I'm like, I look over and I'm like, she did? Like, she did? Like, I'm looking at the doctor like, she was like, you guys did not tell me that you were switching my hygienist. Like, I was so anxious and so, she was like, you guys have to warn me about stuff like that. Like, you shouldn't be treating your patients like this. Like, you know, just basically saying that she was having a panic attack the entire time I was cleaning her teeth. Mind you, I always check on my patients. I'm like, are you okay? The whole time I'm like, are you okay? Are you okay? And honestly, my patients have always told me that I'm very gentle. So I was just like, really lady? So, you know, I'm not gonna say what I think that was, but you guys could just kind of guess what y'all think that that was. You know what I'm saying? Like. She used to see the other hygienist that has a different color than me, baby. And, you know, I love everyone. I love all of, first of all, I love everyone. I'm a child of God. I don't care about people's color. I feel like you can't be Christian. You can't be, you know, you can't love Christ and not love all of his people. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't be so pro-black that you're anti-white. So I do not I love all my patients. I treat all my patients the same, but I definitely felt like that lady was treating me as some type of way because I'm a black girl and I'm a young black girl too. So I'll throw that in there too. I mean, her last hygienist was young as well, you know, and then on top of it, the doctor didn't really have my back like that. Like she was just like, oh, like, you know, apologizing to the patient basically. But not being like, you know, 
did Marshall like do something to harm you? Like Marshall's awesome. Like all of our patients love her. Like, you know, she could have kind of bigged me up a little bit more where she was just kind of like, you know, apologizing to the patient. And the reason why I feel like it had a, it was a race thing was because after that had happened, and mind you, I had been behind the patient the whole time. I don't think the pa patient knew that I was there, but maybe she did. Maybe she decided that she's going to tear me down in front of, of the doctor when she had a chance to just let me know. You know what I mean? She had a chance to be like, hey, I'm not comfortable with you cleaning my teeth in the first place. But she waited until the doctor came in and like expressed her feelings to the doctor. And I felt like crap. Like I wasn't, I remember being in the back of the patient, like just about to burst into tears. So I'm like, what did I do? Like, what was so wrong? Like, what did I do? And I do feel like it was a race thing because after everything happened, after the patient left, like the doctor came to me and like apologized. And I'm just like, you know, she was just like, I'm just, I'm sorry that she said that about you. And you know, so whatever like it's life but at the time i was young and that really hurt my feelings so that was like one of the more horrific things that happened to me just because when something like that happens it does change your perspective not i don't want to say it changed my perspective of, of people right because not everyone we cannot categorize people but it did make me you know just change up my verbiage with people like you know now when i see a patient that used to see a hygienist in the past and they've seen them multiple times i'm like hey you know are you comfortable with me being your hygienist like or i'm gonna be your hygienist if that's okay with you you know what i'm saying and most of the time patients are like okay but just opening up that forum just making sure that i'm checking that box to make sure that I'm asking the patient like are you comfortable seeing me today you know whatever and I do it for all my patients not just for a certain color I do it I just started doing it for all my patients because um you know I want to assume positive so I want to will assume that it was just to do with her anxiety and depression and honestly people do like to see the same provider so I'm gonna assume positive intent and say that it had something to do with that versus a race thing. But um, yeah, because of that, I just, I ask everyone, I'm like, I know you've seen blah, 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 but are you okay seeing me today? You know, if not, we can always get you scheduled back and get you back on their schedule. Or, you know, if you could see me today and then in six months, I'll make sure I schedule you back with your last hygienist. It's as simple as that. Um, Again, people don't love coming to the dental office. They do have anxiety coming in. So we do wanna make sure that they're comfortable. And I, I understand that when you can see the same provider, it makes you more comfortable. If I'm going to the doctor's office, I probably wanna see the doctor that I seen last time. I don't wanna see the new doctor. I'm like, who is this person? So I get it. Now, um, where are we at? I think we're on number two. Okay, so number two, this, is really crazy okay so in pennsylvania which is where um i was licensed so for those of you who don't know i've received my dental hygiene license in pennsylvania basically where i'm from and um just last year i moved here to georgia so this whole time i've been practicing in pennsylvania um with my dental hygiene license but i also had um a local well have because i still keep up with my Pennsylvania licenses. I also have a local anesthesia license. So a local anesthesia license is something that allows me to numb patients, right? So in Pennsylvania, as long as you have a local anesthesia license, you can numb patients for deep cleanings, fillings, crowns. So you can numb your patients for your cleanings. You can also numb doctor's patients. <clears throat> so at this office that I was working at once, um, you know, I have my local anesthesia license and the doctor would ask hygiene to numb all the time. But um, again, I was new there and at my last office or my last two offices, we weren't expected to numb. We were not asked to numb patients. You know, we just, I don't know what it was. Like we just, we didn't numb. So the doctor would do the numbing if we if they needed it. And everyone practices differently. So at this office, she was like, nah, like y'all can help me out. Y'all can numb my patients and numb my patients for me. Like 
Um, but she would she'll be busy running around, so we would like you know she would call us or she'll have the assistants let us know, hey, can you go in there and can you numb this patient for a doctor? So I go in to the room, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, hey, my name's Marsha. I'm gonna go ahead and get you numb for the doctor. The patient was getting a tooth worked on on the bottom. And when you do a bottom tooth, you need to give something called a block for a local anesthesia, okay? Now a block is very dangerous. When you do a block, you're basically like in the mouth, you're hitting um, a bone back here, you're going, and your needle's just about this long too, but the needle's going through the bone here and it's gonna numb up this whole section. So they call it a block because it'll numb up the block here of your teeth. Same thing if you were doing it on this side, it would numb the block. But you have to get the right spot. If you hit the wrong spot, you could damage a nerve. If you hit the wrong spot, you can damage the jaw, you could damage a muscle. There's just so many different things that go into it, okay? But, um. The way that I used to practice and do life, I didn't like to look stuff up. I was just like, we're just going to do it, baby. I think it goes right here. So I was taking my needle. I was like, I think it goes right about there. We're going to just stick it in there. Child, I stuck my needle in that man's mouth. Child, my neck hurt. I'm telling this story. Y'all, I stuck my needle in that man's mouth. I ain't know where I was. I don't know where that needle landed. But all I know is about 30 seconds later, he started panicking. I'm like, what's going on? What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? Like, what's, what's happening here? What's happening, partner? He panicking. He's like, I, I, I'm like, huh? He could not talk. He couldn't talk. He said he couldn't talk and he couldn't swallow. I Y'all, why I done stuck my needle in that man's mouth and numbed his whole throat? Oh my God! I done numbed that man's entire throat. I cannot make this up. I was freaking out. I was panicking. We had to give him water. We, oh my goodness. I can't remember all the things that we had to do. We had to like give him like a lot of water we had to like you know just lay him back like let him relax but like it was in the moment it was so dramatic we had to call the doctor in for an emergency and oh, it was so embarrassing it was so embarrassing it was like girl really 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 you done numb the man's throat his throat that means that i didn't even hit the bone y'all the bone is here i must have went all the way back there and i put that needle in that man's throat i did i did i i admit it i i, I don't know if i admitted at that time but god has delivered me from being a liar and i i, I can't lie no more i did it you're going to jail you're, you're going, going to jail. jail i numbed it i put the needle in his throat you're not going to jail. You're going to prison. <laughs> I did it. Damn. <laughs> I'm out of here. You guys are judgmental. You guys are judgmental. I'm out of here. I hate you. Don't talk to me. Don't look at me like that. Don't act like you've never done anything wrong. Stop it. Get some help. Y'all, I'm guilty. Guilty as charged. I did. I numbed that man's throat. I can't lie about it no more. Like, that was about eight years ago. Seven, six, five, give or take. I did it. I numbed his throat. Life happens, you know, but I regretted it. So, well, that was crazy to me. I was so scared to numb after that. You have no idea. I think the doctor didn't call on me for a year to numb her patients up no more. She said, uh-uh, not that girl, not that one. She said, go get a hygienist, but not that one over there. Don't get that one. Get get, get the other ones. So, all right, y'all. So now we are on to our last one. This is horrific 
moment as a dental hygienist countdown and we are on number one most horrific moment as a dental hygienist in the life as mar in my life i don't know what y'all been doing y'all probably ain't been doing nothing but child i've been out here malpracticing but that's years ago they can't catch me now i hope not i hope this video doesn't incriminate me oh lord all right so number one is Ooh, this one time. So I was again a new hygienist. I was probably practicing for about a year or two at this point. You know, and God keeps life exciting. You know, you might think that you know it all, but you don't. You don't think that you done been there, done that, but you haven't. You might think that you done done it all, but you didn't. So I had this patient come in, new patient, you know, he's like, oh, I'm having pain in my mouth. Okay. So every time we have a new patient, we take the x-rays, you know, we do a full mouth series of x-rays, take some photos of your teeth, you know. So I sent him in the room. I'm like, hey, what's going on? What's wrong? You know, he's like, yeah, I'm just having kind of pain everywhere. And I'm like, oh, everywhere, like every two, he's like every, everywhere, just pain. So I'm like, okay, well, we definitely need to take some x-rays. We need to see what's going on. So, you know, I get my x-rays together. You know, you know, doing my hygiene job. You know what I'm saying? And it was a Friday. I was chilling. I was like, oh, we was, we didn't have much going on. My patient, you know, had canceled before him. So I had plenty of time. I was just, you know, getting off a little snack break. I was just like, oh yeah. And he might've been like my last, my second to last patient of the day. I was like, we got this in a bag. Like, you know, I'm gonna take his x-rays real quick. Boom, boom, boom. You know, do my thing, get the doctor, clean him up. Boom, 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 get him out of here. Going to my next one. Then we going out tonight. We going to the club, we getting lit. That was my lit party life back then. So, you know, I'm just doing my thing, put my x-rays together. I'm like, all right, let's get started. So it's going to be a lot of x-rays, okay? We're going to take about 18 x-rays, go all the way around the mouth. It's going to take me about four minutes. You ready? Open up. <laughs> Open up your mouth so we can take these x-rays. So, you know, he opens. Did I take a look? No. I didn't take a look at his mouth. I just was like, all right, let's go. He, um, you know, opens up. He bites down. I hear I'm like, I run out, I press the exit button, beep. I'm like, okay, next, go over. I'm like, okay, bite down. I hear another. I'm like, what's going on here? And then I run out, hit the exit button, beep. I'm like, all right. So now we're gonna go down to the lower left side. I put that x ray in there. He, I'm like, okay, go ahead and bite down. Real nice and gentle for me this time. He bites out here. I'm like, what was that? Did you did you hear that? Or is am I hearing something? Is that is something like is is your jaw is your jaw is something cracked? He's like, he has no. He's like, oh, I'm like, all right. I go out. Beep. Press the button. Now I said, okay. Now we gonna go to this side right here. Go ahead and bite down real slow, real nice and gentle. He bites down. I hear. I'm like, but that time I seen something. And I'm like, hold on. Can you, can you open up for a second? Why this man open up his mouth and there was multiple teeth fractures sitting on his tongue. Every time I was telling that man to bite down, I was hearing a crack and I noticed that his teeth were breaking. Every time he bit down, a, a tooth was breaking. I kid you not, I cannot make this up. I was taking x-rays on this man and every time he bit down, a tooth was breaking, the tooth broke. When I tell you, when I noticed that his teeth were breaking, I said, can you give me a second really quick? 
and I ran to my doctor's office and I said, girl, what in the world is going on? I said, I'm taking x-rays and this man's teeth are breaking. Now, mind you, I'm a, I'm a new hygienist. Well, like maybe a year in at this point. Maybe not. I can't remember. Somebody's dog is like flipping out right now. Like, can you calm down? I'm trying to make a video here. Anyways, I'm like, this man's teeth are breaking every time I take the extra. Every time I tell him to break by down and his teeth are breaking and I just remember sitting on her floor I'm like crying I'm like what is going on like is it me am I doing it because I didn't know any better like I didn't know but it's like what do you do though it's like you gotta get x-rays of the teeth or is it just to the point where it's like dude all your teeth just need to come out like now I probably would have looked at his teeth like hello that's just once again me being slow and naive y'all slow and naive um they should have had that as that should have been my nickname slow and naive Randolph but y'all yeah like every time I was like having him bite down a tooth a, a tooth was breaking so I just went to my doctor I'm like I don't know what to do like I know you told me to like take x-rays on these new patients but like oh y'all my lashes are coming off but like this man I'm trying to take x-rays on him and like his teeth are just breaking and I was so seriously breaking down crying like I told this story for years and years like for years I told this story and I used to probably tell it better like more like in the moment but it's been years now since since this incident so you know i have lost like the feelings of it all but i remember just being like what in the world is going on like for your teeth to be breaking every time you bite down i don't know what he was doing you know but when your teeth are that bad and you kind of let it go and he was super young this guy was like 30 it's like bro what, what's going on so then the doctor ended up coming in and just taking a look and being like, yeah, pretty much we just got to extract all of your teeth. And like, mind you, he had all his teeth. They were just all so broken down. So she like had to put a big treatment plan to get all of his teeth out. And the sad thing is that I don't think we ever seen him again. Poor guy. So I'm gonna say a prayer for him. Amen. Amen. So... That is it, guys. That is a wrap to this week's video on my channel. So that was the five most horrific moments in my dental hygiene career. And y'all, to be honest, I'm pretty sure that I have a lot more. I'm pretty sure that I have a lot more. So if you want part two of this video, make sure that you comment down below, okay? But guys, really quick before you go, before you click off this channel and before you continue on your day, I need your help, y'all. I need you to make sure that right now you stop what you are doing, you hit subscribe, you push the like button, button and you comment leave me a comment y'all there's also a bell hit the bell so you get notified every time i post another video because y'all i be giving all the dental hygiene tea all of it so make sure you join me join me on my channel join me on my journey um as i you know do more to become better you know i'm only getting better in life i'm becoming a better hygienist i've been doing this for eight years but i'm still not at my peak i still need god to continue to work on me